Hello, Burn McCarthy here from Bone Break. Delighted to be doing my first tutorial of 2024. I am going to address many of the comments I've seen in my two most popular videos, which is the tracer effect. A lot of people are asking questions around how to get more control, how to manipulate that system better. To be honest, it, it's not the best system for total control. So we're going to explore how to create something very similar like this and get more control and to have a bit more procedural in the process. Um, I appreciate everyone who comments on that video. It's been really helpful and inspired me to go and show you another way of creating something similar with a little bit more control so everyone can have a much easier time creating something like that in Cinema 4D. Before we start, remember to go to the Bold and Break store. For anyone who purchases products, it is much appreciated and helps support the channel. Please remember to like and subscribe. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an arc spline come out of our perspective view and go into our front view we're going to set the start angle to 180 set the end end angle to zero we get a semicircle press c to make that arc a editable spline then we are going to select our pen tool and we are going to add a little bit of curvature to the spline here and let's do that I'm going to Deselect that, select these points, maybe move it in a bit and just kind of make it a bit smoother. It's not going to be perfect. We're just going to do this rough and same with this end point here. Drag that off. So just get this nice, smooth hump it up a little bit. It's like I'm back in Adobe Illustrator. That is not going to be perfect. Still a bit janky looking, but we just want to get the general idea. We're going to press Shift C, type in Mo Spline. We're going to select our Mo Spline, change the mode to Spline, bring in our R to be our source Spline. We're going to press Shift C again, type in Cloner, and we're going to change the mode of the Cloner to Linear. We're going to put the Y to zero. We're going to put the Z to 10. We're also going to put the count to 10 as well. You might be saying to yourself, Mo Spline is only Affecting one of these clone splines, we can fix that by pressing Shift C, typing in connect, putting our cloner under the connect object, selecting our mole spline and changing the source spline to be the connect object magic. If nothing works in Cinema 4D, if it's just not working, throw it into a connect object. That is a quick tip for life. Render this. So we press render in our Redshift render view nothing comes up what is happening right click go down to render tags go down to rs object select your rs object change the mode to hair strands and there you go make sure you are in the curve panel when you change that mode um, and you have a selection here of different types of curves you can add to the spline. Now, the beauty of this system is that it is completely procedural in the sense of I can just change the spline and all 10 update in the cloner and the most spline still recognizes it. This makes it much easier to control. What is amazing about this also is we can animate it. So if we have our most spline selected and we bring our end percentage to zero, keyframe it, Go to the end, go to 100. You can see here, you can see here it's animating. You might say, I don't want them animating one by one. That's fine. You can change the grow mode to separate segments and they will all animate at once, which is great. And if we put this cloner up to, let's put it 50, come in here. Again, all of this is just, you can, change stuff on the fly, which is amazing. Okay, so how do we create what we are seeing in the thumbnail of this video? Let's do that quickly. We go to create materials, go down to incandescent material, double click, open up this panel here. We could dock it. Uh, let's dock it maybe here. When we're in this panel, we press shift C bring in ramp, bring in another node called vertex attribute. Then we want to plug our ramp into our illumination color, bring our out color into general output alt 
input. Change our ramp to this full color. Maybe not that one. Let's go for this. Yeah, this will be easier to control. And then select your vertex attribute. Go to presence and select curve ID color. Bring your incandescent material and put it on to your most spline. Now, just so you can see what's happening, if we don't do this and we remove it again, it'll just be green. So make sure you have the attribute name set to curve ID color. To get more control over the colors here that are distributed along the spline, we want to select our knots here, hold shift, select the first knot and the last knot, and it will select all of them. Right click on the knot, change the interpolation type to step. That allows you weight, basically, the amount of color in each section. So you can see here more reds coming in, which is quite cool. Probably a bit too much green. We can also do this with any gradient. So we'll do that again we'll here on this rainbow. So we just have a bit more colors. Interpolation type to step. A mix mash of colors in here. We want to go back into our incandescent node here. Set the intensity multiplier to 50, maybe not 50, maybe 30. So to get those glows, we wanna just make sure we can see this cog here. Bring out a post effects panel, uh, put on bloom, and you start to get those warm glows. And maybe put on not flare, but streak. And you get more of those warm glows again. Maybe bring down the intensity to 10. 20. You can also change the thickness by selecting your redshift tag that's on your mole spline of this spline. Maybe bring it down to 0.5 so you get, you know, just thinner lines. And you can see some jaggedness going on with the spline. So if we select our spline and we have it, the intermediate points set on uniform and we bring that up to, let's say, 32, get a much smoother spline. There you have it. We will also actually, before we go, we will just get this nice feathered at the end. You can get those nice feathered edges. So here in your redshift tag, you can change the curvature of your spline. So you can see it kind of fades off into distance when I start to change this curvature, which is great. And there you go. Um, a much better way to control and create this system. You can also do it with a force field, the matrix object and a tracer object. So there are many ways to do things in Cinema 4D. This is just one of them. Please like, subscribe, comment on the video. Do you find this more helpful? Does it give you more control? Please remember to visit the Boulder Break store. There's some great products on there. Adding all the time. Again, it's a work in progress. Still trying to figure out and getting the time to clean up a few bits of the store. But if there's anything on there you like or see, please put it in the bag. I will also be doing sales every now and again and offering discounts to people who have already bought things. Also, there is online tutoring there. So if you want a one to one with me via Zoom, you can look into the tutoring and mentoring section of the store. Without further ado, I will leave you there. Thank you for watching and goodbye.